Our first segment is called A Titan Rides the Train. What that means will be revealed in due course. Being alone in his hidden lab sits the leader. The human race is still unaware of the terrible menace he poses to mankind. Once, he was an ordinary laborer in a chemical research plant. An accident caused by his own carelessness bombarded his body with mysterious gamma rays and mysteriously transformed him into the greatest brain that ever lived. I only vaguely remembered the leader from the comics, so I looked him up. According to Wikipedia, his accident happened in Boise, Idaho. I lived in Boise for close to 10 years, and I don't know where he found gamma rays there, but somehow he did. Maybe somewhere between 1966 and 2002, the gamma rays got moved somewhere else. When I lived there, it never occurred to me to ask. I've become something more than human. My former name is meaningless now. I choose to be known simply as... The leader. With my vast intelligence, I am ready to take over all the governments of the world. Why is that always the first thing they think of? If he put that brain to work for humanity, he could get richer than Howard Hughes ever thought of. And with a bigger brain than Howard Hughes, he could probably avoid becoming an eccentric weirdo, too. Well, there is the whole... Uh, and the green stuff, but uh, never mind. Using these humanoids which I have created, they are utterly indestructible and obey me implicitly. With their help, I shall gain control of all the nuclear devices on Earth. My first conquest will be the Great Southwestern Missile Base, which employs Dr. Bruce Banner, the most brilliant atomic scientist on Earth. Question number one. How did he build all that stuff on a custodian's salary? Who's bankrolling him? We find General Thunderbolt Ross overseeing the shipment of a gigantic nuclear device. Dr. Banner, you are not to leave the train until this device reaches its destination. And I've ordered Major Talbot to keep you under surveillance at all times. You may be considered the nation's top atomic expert, but I still don't trust you. Today, when we call someone the GOAT, it means greatest of all time. It definitely did not mean that in 1966. The goat was the one who always seemed to get it wrong and became the butt of all the jokes. Considering General Ross's attitude toward Banner, he might have been a good candidate. But he's a little too large a character, and it would feel like we were shoehorning that aspect into him. So we introduced Major Talbot to fill that role. Along the way, we learned that the main reason Thunderbolt hates Bruce Banner is because his daughter Betty is sweet on him. He thinks she should marry a real man, you know, one who waves a gun around all the time, and not some puny marshmallow who's always thinking. I mean, who does that? Talbot has even more reason to hate Banner because he'd like to marry Betty himself. The general would be okay with that. The problem is Betty wouldn't. She can tell that the main reason Talbot wants to marry her is to get in really good with the general. It's not as though he actually loves her or something unmanly like that. I don't remember if we'll see any of that playing out in these cartoons, but those of us who were familiar with the comics knew what was going on. Dr. Banner's nuclear device must not reach its destination. And you, my invincible humanoid, will see that it never does. With this cybernetic headpiece, I can mentally control your every movement. And through this spectroscopic transceiver, I can see everything that you see. Do you see what I see? Wait, that was something else. He called it a spectroscopic receiver. Spectroscopic things have to do with colors. So that's how he communicates with them. A red light means attack, blue means stop, yellow means run away. He discovered too late that making them colorblind was a bad idea. Look, a whirly bird. It's not one of ours. Stop, stop or I'll shoot. The bullets are going right through him. That's not what I saw. It looks to me like they're going past him because you keep missing. You took your training at the Imperial Stormtrooper Academy, didn't you? Come quick, Major! Looks like big trouble! My device, it mustn't fall into enemy hands. You stay in this car, Banner, until I see what's going on up there. 
But if my atomic apparatus is in danger, I should be there too. It represents years of work. It's irreplaceable. I've got to know what's going on out there. You can't get down on Talbot too much. As the saying goes, when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Any disturbance involving national security naturally calls for a big honking gun, not a guy who knows all about the thing the bad guys are after. And as we might suspect, Bruce is getting a little too excited. No one locks up the Hulk. Meanwhile, the horrible humanoid uncouples the car containing the nuclear device. But even the leader doesn't dream that his inhuman slave will have to cope with the fighting mad, onrushing Hulk. The only problem is this thing is made of silly putty. It's like punching a feather pillow. The Hulk can't figure out why he doesn't fall down. That titanic monster also has green skin. I thought I was the only one. Don't follow the news much, do you? Now his android has a new mission. Capture the Hulk so the leader can make him a slave. Yeah. They're approaching an overpass. Quickly, give him a high voltage electric shock. The electric shock so startles the green-tinted powerhouse that he releases his iron grip momentarily. But the Incredible Hulk is not so easily defeated. He desperately performs a seemingly impossible feat. He's back. My high-voltage defense is useless now. Yeah, he came back to tell you to do it again. It tickles. The Hulk notices that the bolts holding his invention to the rail car are coming out and the device is in danger of hitting a tank car that's right behind it. What genius thought it was a good idea to put a container of flammable liquid right next to it, I don't know. Good thing there's a little bit of Bruce Banner left inside that brain. The first thing he has to do is get rid of Sponge Blob. Green. My screen is blank. I can no longer control the humanoid. And without my mental commands, it becomes a lifeless, motionless non-entity. They just don't make indestructible robots like they used to. The Hulk's primary mode of travel is jumping from point A to point B. His legs are so powerful they can propel him seemingly for miles as well as absorb the impact of landing. That was a thing from the very beginning, and it was one of the things that made the Incredible Hulk unique. I don't know of another comic character who consistently got around like that. He puts that ability to good use and returns to the train. But before a catastrophe can take place, an incredible steel-muscled figure hurls... A Something doesn't add up here. The concern was that it would come loose, slide back, and hit a tanker car. But it's the last car on the train, we said that multiple times. So, where's the tanker? Plus, we watched the android uncouple the car from the rest of the train. So, what we have here is technically known as a mess. From the train onto the soft sand, the danger is ended. But the strain begins to tell on the victorious Hulk. His body again starts to undergo a cataclysmic change. And it's about to become a bigger mess when Talbot finds him out there on the edge of nowhere with his machine. Banner, I might have known. God, place that man under arrest. He won't ask what happened. He won't try to go look for the android that the Hulk disabled. He'll assume that Banner was trying to sabotage his own creation and charge him with treason. That's the kind of thing the goat does so it can come back and bite him in the hiney later. The leader doesn't care about Bruce Banner right now. I've got to learn more about the green monster who dared to oppose my plan. I shall have to prove that my brain can destroy his body. So the gamma rays gave him that big head and super duper brain but didn't do anything for his self-esteem. He still feels like he has to prove he's superior and he can only do that by doing bad things to other people and entities. He should go into politics, he'd fit right in. This takes us into part two called The Horde of Humanoids. Did you bring me the tranquilizer pills I asked for, General? Sure, Banner, and you're going to need them. General, you must believe me. I'm not a spy. Would I try to destroy my own invention? You're a cool one, Banner. But those tranquilizers won't help when you stand trial for treason. 
The United States Penal Code defines treason as levying war against the United States or adhering to their enemies, giving them aid and comfort. Show me where and how he did either of those things. But Talbot thinks this is the perfect opportunity to get rid of his romantic rival. If he only knew, the real reason I take these pills is so that I won't change back into the Hulk. With those two in his face, he'd better take several. An urgent message, General. It's an order from headquarters. Banner, your trial's being postponed. You're to go to Astra Island to supervise the test on the nuclear absorbatron you invented. They do know Blunderbolt has him in jail over that thing, yes? Thankfully, there are people even he has to answer to. He doesn't like it, but orders are orders. I probably don't need to mention that he'll send Talbot along as Bruce's chaperone. This is the chameleon. Bruce Banner and an army task force are on their way to Astra Island to test his newest atomic invention. That guy is pretty much a one and done. He appears there and then ceases to exist as far as we can tell. I have a feeling he might have been a subtle callback to a character from Marvel's war comic, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos. Before Nick Fury, who at the time looked more like Richard Boone than Samuel L. Jackson, became director of S.H.I.E.L.D., he led a squad of commandos during World War II. Several times they came up against Hitler's most insidious spy, the Agent of a Thousand Faces. When he wasn't in disguise, he wore a blank mask like that. The big difference is, his had a swastika on it, this guy's doesn't. But to my mind, the similarity is a little too close to be coincidence. The leader says that green thing defeated one of my humanoids, but if he shows up, even he won't be able to deal with a whole horde of them. Hold it. What do those dials do? Go ahead, Bruce. Explain it to him. I think by now we would all be delighted to see his head explode. Before you turn them, I want to be sure you're not calling the Hulk. I've never called him. You lie. I know that the two of you work together. To do what? What does he think they want? No. I fear him as much as you do. I'm getting too excited. And my tranquilizer pills are all gone. Oh, no. I feel another change coming on. I've got to run. The Major won't stand a chance against the Hulk. Stop, or I'll shoot. Yes, kill him. That's the way to get answers. As I said, Talbot is the goat. Everything he does is wrong. What's that noise? A monster. Then Banner did contact you. And told him what? What does he think Banner is out to do that requires the Hulk? Bullets have no effect on him. I've got to escape. If I can just lower this ten-ton door in time. He's loosening it with his bare fists. Yes, that's a thing he does. He's also very much into punishing guys who shoot him. The leader's army of humanoids have been walking on the bottom of the ocean, and they've reached the island. The leader just noticed that the Hulk is there. Ah, I'm being attacked. At first, I have something to smash. Too bad they're walking rubber dolls like the other one he fought. They'll go back and forth several times. They rush him, he throws them off, but he can't do any damage to them. While that's happening, Talbot has been closing blast doors and otherwise protecting the device. Once that's done, he calls in the troops to take down the Hulk. A quick peek outside might tell him a few things that he needs to know, but this is Talbot. He's not into knowledge. See us. Surround him. Now let him have it. He didn't even feel it. Move in. We'll try a direct attack. Have they noticed those orange things swarming all over him? I guess not. My humanoids must capture him quickly before they cheat me of my prize. But fate suddenly takes a hand, thwarting both the sinister leader and the startled troops. Sensing that his fantastic change is about to occur, the titanic Hulk savagely propels himself away from the battle-scarred isle. The leader brings his army home. He must have changed his mind about the nuclear thing. Talbot and the others watch to see if the Hulk appears in the water. Do you think he's finished, Major Talbot? I'm sure of it. Even the Hulk is no match for these waters. Of course. The Major doesn't realize we're operating under soap opera rules here. If you didn't see a body, they're still alive even if they come back as somebody else. 
which is what Bruce Banner tends to do. I'm not sure where this Astor Island is. I found several candidates from Samoa to Barbados, but this one apparently isn't an American territory. Now a mile away, the massive frame of the mighty Hulk has begun to shrink into the vulnerable form of Dr. Bruce Banner. His now normal lungs bursting for air, he struggles to the surface. Prepare to seize the survivor. Ah, we have made a prize catch. It is the famous scientist Dr. Banner. <laughs> I appreciate your fishing me out of the sea, Captain. Ah, listen to the fool! Take him below while we head for home water. The narrator said the Hulk swam a mile away from the island before he changed. So there's a Russian sub within a mile of the island sitting there on the surface in plain sight. Elsewhere, the leader wants to find Dr. Banner so he can learn more about the Hulk since they always seem to be in the same place. I shall contact the captor of Dr. Banner, one of my so-called allies. Oh. Colonel, I understand you have made a prisoner of Dr. Bruce Banner. How did you know, Green One? We plan to put his talents to use. And now we know who the leader's financial backers are, as if there was ever a question. Take warning, you may live to regret it. Bah. We have many captured scientists, and none have ever escaped. He's not exaggerating. They've captured several scientists. This is our secret weapons development lab. You don't see anyone being forced to work? And now, Doctor, there are a number of experiments that a man of your talents could help us to perform. Mister, just don't hold your breath while you're waiting for me to say yes. He doesn't have to. The rule is, if you want to eat, you cooperate. If you're okay starving to death, feel free to hold out. Banner knows he only has one chance, and that's to get good and angry. Ah, it's working. Ah, I'm changing. Growing stronger. Stronger. It's the Hulk. Where did he come from? He's a point like range. Don't panic. He's still human. Yeah, show me a human who can do that. You shouldn't have done that. It just makes him angry. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Purely insects. No, I swat them like flies. Vaporize that. Nothing on earth can stand up to a double baroom. Major. We just received this report from one of our patrol planes. Banner was picked up by an unfriendly sub. Then he was a traitor. Well, let the enemy have him. Good riddance. He's the nation's top nuclear scientist. His head is full of all kinds of classified stuff. Talbot just handed him over to his enemies. When Dr. Banner found out, he said, okay, just go with it. His first invention was a fart bomb and he dropped it right on Talbot. For the rest of his days, nobody could get within 10 feet of the Major. With Bruce Banner gone and Major Talbot stinky, poor Betty Ross never married. And that's the end of the episode. I'm guessing it's a two-parter, but nobody bothered to tell us that. It just ends abruptly and goes into the closing theme. These cartoons did that on occasion and all the heroes will get at least one turn at it. We're getting a good look at Major Talbot, and he'll be an ongoing thorn in Bruce's side, at least through 1971 when I stopped reading. I don't know if he's still around today, and to be honest, I don't care. He's one of those characters that you love to dislike. Hats off to Weird Al, because everything the Major knows is wrong. He lets his hatred of Banner get in the way of clear thinking, and there's nobody around to keep him in check. Thunderbolt won't do it because he has the same opinion of Bruce. They both have a free hand to insult, rag on, and otherwise abuse him to their heart's content. At least until he gets angry. Means greatest. Ah! <clears throat> All right. Uh, yes. I see. Okay. On pitch. <clears throat> Holding his vention. Vention. The Hulk notices. C 
God, don't bite your tongue. Hulk's primary mode of travel, travel, 